Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Wanted to make another card with the Simon Says Stamp September 2019 card kit. I had a random idea that was inspired by this pattern paper that comes in the kit here on the right. And I wanted to use the bird images from the set. Because with my last card, I used all the floral images. So I had this idea and I was like seeing if I could pull it off <laughs> and filming at the same time. So what I did was I took a piece of Distress watercolor paper. This is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I have my T-square ruler. Any ruler will work. Just needed a straight edge. And I have a pencil and then I've got my bird images on um, some acrylic blocks. And I am just drawing in the lines with a pencil and then stamping the birds on the lines. I had seen a piece of artwork years ago with all these birds, you know, kind of on a wire, that sort of a print, they're, they're pretty easy to come by. I just remember seeing one one time and they were almost like kind of rainbow colors of the birds and the print. And I'm still to this day kicking myself for not getting it because I loved it. <laughs> anyway, thought I would kind of recreate that idea inspired by these pattern papers and using these little bird images. So I just keep going along and drawing the lines with a pencil, just kind of working from top to bottom here and just kind of going on an angle, just like how the pattern paper, the stripes of color are, you know, uneven and on angles. And then once I've got everything stamped, I can then re like go over these lines with a um, black pen. I didn't want to do a pen first because like I did with the little flying bird and then there's another bird there, they go over the line. So it's easier to, you know, fill this in afterwards. I ended up adding a couple more lines with the ruler. The top one ended up not mattering. It's going to like get cut off, but you know, I wasn't sure at the time what exactly I was going to do with this entire panel. So once I was happy with everything, I go in with, I'm just using a pilot envelope addressing pen and I will have links to everything. This is just a really, really good black, very black pen. And I just go along and of course my head gets in the way. I didn't even realize obviously until I started editing <laughs> because I was trying to make sure I was lining up the ruler again with those pencil lines. So I was kind of looking like straight down. And I made sure to omit the areas where the one little bird's head is right there and then that flying bird. So those little pencil lines I'm just erasing with my tiny little mono zero eraser. Because it's just got the perfect little like fine tip there. So once I get that erased, this is all good to go to start coloring. And I decided to use my Distress Oxide inks to do some very simple watercoloring. So I'm going to tape this panel down just to my little like cutting board here with some blue painter's tape. And I'm going to paint the entire background first. So I wanted a color that went with the, it's kind of like a powdery blue in that pattern paper. And none of my Distress Oxides are quite that color. So I just custom made my own by mixing um, Broken China and Shaded Lilac. I just smushed them right onto my glass media mat and then mixing them both together to get that little like stripe of powdery blue color. Cause I thought that was like the perfect kind of, you know, background color. So mix those together really well, added some water so I'm to make sure I had enough because I wanted to be able to paint this entire background without running out and, you know, and then trying to, you know, remix and match the color. Even though, honestly, I'm not too concerned. Like, this doesn't need to be perfect. I do work top, like top to bottom, um, somewhat trying to keep, you know, everything wet, but at the same time, not really worrying about it. That's also why I chose the Distress Oxides, because they're Distress Oxides. So they'll do their own funny things with water and, you know, you get different. It just looks different. If you want a smooth, perfect background, I would recommend using like full on watercolor or just putting in some extra time. But I like that texture and I'm going to splatter this, of course, anyway. So I just painted it. Didn't take very long. Got the whole background filled in here. This was actually pretty easy because technically you could just paint up to each line, you know, if you were worried about getting everything even. So that is also a nice thing about it. But once it was filled in, I quickly dried it with my heat tool and then I splattered this whole thing liberally with just clean water. And then I let that sit for about a minute or so. Now with Distress Inks and Distress Oxides, because I've already mixed it with water, that's what I did when I was, you know, watercoloring it. It doesn't react as strongly when you splatter the ink on, 
which I was aware of, but I'm j- I when I first started playing with chess things, I always wondered sometimes it's like why do sometimes you get these really bright white, you know, removals of the when you splatter with water and you know more of a reaction with the inks. Well, it's because if you blend the inks on, you know, just straight ink and then add the water, you get that m- reaction. But when you've already activated the inks with the water, you get a different, you know, more subtle reaction if you add more water to it. So it just kind of depends on the look you're going for. And yes, I did consider, <laughs> I did think about uh, splattering with white paint too, but decided to leave it off this time. So I went with the colors of that pattern paper, which is also a nice thing because it kind of made me reach for colors I normally don't reach for, such as like that third bird, the kind of orangey colored one. That's the rusty hinge, which is not a color I reach for very often. And I went with, and then my, and again, because my gut would have been to do just rainbow colors in the colors that I normally do a rainbow in with the distress line, you know, pink, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, but in those more bright colors. But because I was, you know, going more with the colors of the pattern paper, I pulled out colors I normally wouldn't use and did them in an order I normally wouldn't do because I also painted them kind of in the order they appear on the pattern paper. So... That is something I know I don't use. I get a lot of grief <laughs> that I don't use pattern paper near as often as I used to. And it's true, I don't. But I like being inspired by it. Whether I use it or not, I do like, you know, taking inspiration from it, which this one was very heavily inspired by the pattern paper. So I finished this up by painting that last little birdie in that mowed lawn green. And then once everything was dry, I peeled off the uh, painter's tape. And then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine with the largest of the wonky rectangles wafers dies. So ran that through and on camera it looks okay, but in real life I wasn't happy with it. Like I love this wafer die. I've used it so many times. It's ridiculous, but I really didn't like how that wavy stitching line was looking with all of these straight lines that the birds are on. It just... One, I didn't like that. And the other thing I wasn't happy with was it wasn't small enough. So to back it with the pattern paper, it's like covering the pattern paper, which was the inspiration of the entire card. So I was kind of at a dilemma and I was thinking about like, what am I going to do? Should I just completely redo this, do a different piece? But when I started really thinking this, I'd already cut down the pattern paper because I was like, oh, I could do a bigger card, like a taller card. All these different things were running through my head. I ended up actually walking away from this, you know, going and picking my kids up from day camp, all that fun stuff, like just walking away, come back to it with a clear head. So what I ended up doing after this point is I came back and I die cut this again with one of Simon's just basic rectangle wafer dies. So it die cut it smaller, that way more of the pattern paper is going to show. And then I also cut down a piece of black cardstock just very slightly larger than my little watercolor panel here, just to give it a little bit of a frame. So that way I got the birds, I have a little bit more of the black pulled in, and then you'll see more of the pattern paper on the actual card. And I won't have to re-stamp and repaint that entire background. Much more happy with this. So after I did that, I grabbed my scrap of black cardstock here, used my anti-static powder tool, wiped off the excess with my big surface sweep brush, and then I'm gonna stamp a couple sentiments from that Look for the Rainbow stamp set onto this cardstock with um, Simon's Clear Embossing Ink. Once I've got those stamped, I'm gonna coat these both with Detail White Embossing Powder and then melt both of these with my heat tool. Once everything is melted, I'm trimmed both of these sentiments down with my paper trimmer. And the main one, the Thinking of You sentiment, I just cut the one end um, on an angle just to give it a little something. And then I'm going to adhere that to this panel with a bit of Simon's Big Mama foam tape. I'm also going to use the Big Mama foam tape on the back of this uh, black cardstock. So just covering the back of that. And I like to use my little Tim Holtz snips when I'm using this foam tape because it's just, it's perfect. They're a match made in heaven. That foam tape with those scissors, life made. So before I get to assembling the card front though, I want to finish the inside. So I have that sentiment that I heat embossed and cut down. And then I inked up a couple of the birds with a couple of the oxide inks and stamped those onto the inside of the card, making one so he's going to like stand on top of the sentiment basically and the other one kind of flying up to him. And then I'm going to adhere that sentiment with the uh, with Simon's Craft Tacky Glue. 
So once I got that adhered, I can then assemble my card front. So the pattern paper I had cut down to A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. So it'll completely cover the front of this card. So I'm going to adhere that to the card base with the craft tacky glue. And then I'm gonna peel off the back of the Big Mama foam tape and pop this panel into place onto the pattern paper. And then once I've got that adhered into place, um, in the kit, there's this pack of like enamel dots. And I just pulled out one from the kit, just this, the one of the little sparkly hearts, cause I thought it just kind of added a little birds and the thinking of you. I thought it'd just be a cute little extra something. So I just stuck that into place. And then the Nouveau gemstones, of course, that come in the kit, I've almost used all of them up already because I've just left them sitting on my desk. So I'm just adding them to everything. It's like, oh, you know, what's it missing? Put a gemstone on it. So <laughs> stuck a bunch of those into place with the craft tacky glue. And once those are in place, that finishes off my card. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list links to all the supplies I used. If you want to check that out, you can check it out below. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.